Hey, thanks for coming back and uh, joining me for another episode of my Jupiter 2 model build. So what I've got here are the seats for the uh, main console area of the ship to control everything. So I've already given these all a shot of fine white Tamiya primer. So I've gone and I've painted this seat black and all the other side pieces and everything have been painted with aluminum. I'm going to go ahead and start uh, to use some super glue here and just glue them into position where they belong on the seat. Alright, and there we go. We have one of the seats assembled and I just need to do a little bit of black painting here. And as you can see, both seats are now complete with the black detailing all around them. So moving on here we have the main console and there's a lot of work to be done here and I'll be doing a lot of modification and lighting. So uh, let's just dive right into this. At the top here we've got these three panels which just fit right into these slots here. So we've got three of those going across the top and these are the uh, control panels here and the kit comes with these clear plastic pieces which I will not be using. Uh, I will be using some photo etch again. We got these three console panels here. And then we have these three panels which attach to those that go on the upper portion of the uh, main console. So I painted the entire console the Vallejo sky green. I've also painted the underside flat black for light blocking purposes because there will be a lot of lighting going in here. These clear plastic pieces that come with the kit have decals which go over them which I will not be using but you can see they fit in there. And the photo etch kit is to replace that. And you can see how that fits in the exact same slot right there. Uh, it mentions in the photo etch to use the existing plastic pieces and just attach the photo etch on top, but I will not be doing that. Um, I got a sheet of 0.75 millimeter clear styrene, and I'm going to cut a piece out that's the same size as my photo etch, and the photo etch will lay on top of that. Uh, you can see how the photo etch is inset there and that uh, styrene I have here will raise it up and make it more flush and also make it easier to paint the back side. So I've cut out some areas here, exposed a little more of where the photo etch has some lights that need to be uh, seen. And you can see when I lay this one piece in here and shine a flashlight through the back, you can see how the holes light up where I've cut out some of the grooves at the bottom and top there. So again, here's the uh, kit clear plastic piece and here is my sheet of 0.75 millimeter styrene which fits nicely inside there. And then when I take the photo etch piece and lay it on top, you can see how that fits pretty flush against the rest of the console and how the light shines through. So I've gone and I have glued the uh, clear plastic sheets in on either side. I will not be using it in the center for reasons you will find out later. I've also painted around the edges of the plastic, the clear plastic. You can kind of see it with some more of that Vallejo sky green for light blocking. And I've also cut out some sheets of 0.25 millimeter styrene, painted it black to make a little light box on the underside to contain the light and bounce it around and make it better. And I've attached those pieces. I've also put some paper in front of the uh, console areas to diffuse the light. And I've taken this piece of styrene here and I've notched it to have the same type of shape 
And then what I've got is this cool white LED strip, which I've attached to my styrene. Um, I put some black electrical tape on the back side for light blocking. And that just fits nicely right inside there, as you can see. And I've gone and I've painted the back side of all three, actually four pieces of my photo etch with clear blue, clear red, and clear yellow. And then I've also glued on these little acetate pieces that came with the photo etch to simulate the radar screens. And I've also put some black tape on the back side of the speaker portion on right here on both of the end console pieces. And the center one I have painted gray. Uh, the left and right side ones the decals completely cover but the center decal is clear and it actually should be a gray console. Anyway here you can see them all uh, lit up and how they're going to be looking to start. So we got the decals here to put on and I'm just going to use some of my micro scale micro set and rub it all over the photo etch here and then I'm going to carefully take my decal which has been soaking in water and just slide it off the paper right onto this photo etch console piece here on the side. So I have all three decals attached to the photo etch pieces and you can see here how that's looking. Now to the eye the color is more like it is when my iris is down but when it's bright like this. So moving on I've started to cut out the uh, upper panels for this photo etch. Um, I have all these little teeny holes in this photo etch piece um, so I need to remove all the back side of these panels which I have now done to all three so that the photo etch fits nicely on top as you can see here and then light can be seen although I won't be using LEDs behind them I will be feeding fiber through every single individual hole here and then because I'm going to be putting fiber optics in there I made these little back plates that I'm going to attach to extend the rear out just a tad to give me some more room to bend all my fibers down because there is going to be some thickness there from all my fibers. And you can see here that the back plate for the kit fits nicely over the pieces that I've made and it'll just extend it out and make it look like a little bit deeper of a console. So I've glued them together, done some puttying, and now I'm just sanding down trying to make it smooth to make it look like it's one piece as you can see here. And again I've primed these with Tamiya Fine Primer and you can see there's no seam there. And I've glued my photo etch pieces in to the front side and you can see how the back panel fits on there. And I've got myself a nice little panel with a lot of clearance here for all of my fiber optics that are going to be going into the uh, photo etch. So I've painted the front with a fine white primer then used some tape to cover up the panels and then gave it a shot of flat black primer on top of that. And then you can see when I remove my tape here there's the black and then when I remove the tape that I put over the white you've got the white panels and then you can see I filled in some of the area in between the white panels and here's how they look compared to the uh, decals that came with the photo etch. So moving on here we've got some 0.25 millimeter fiber optic which is what I'll be feeding in through every single hole inside that photo etch and originally I had cut a piece to length and I was sitting here and holding the ends together like so and I started to run down and say okay I'm gonna cut here and I'm like this is gonna take me forever then my wife reminded me about this that I made for her for the holidays 
to cut some yarn for a project she was working on. And I made one for myself with two nails that are six inches apart and I'm going to wrap the fiber around them. And so I'm just going to start here and start wrapping my 0.25 millimeter fiber around my two nails which are six inches apart and then when I cut it it'll give me 12 inch long strands of fiber. So I'm just gonna cut it now that I've run my whole 500 feet of fiber through here and this is giving me basically 500 foot long strands of fiber. So the bottom row of lights is slightly larger at 0.5 millimeter fiber and I've already run those in and glued those into position. And now I'm just going to continue on by filling in the rest of the holes with my uh, quarter millimeter fiber. And as I go, I'm using Elmer's glue to glue in sections at a time. And you can see all the fiber coming out here that I need to cut. So I have all three panels run with fiber. Um, I've cut the ends to make it flush with the front of the panels. Uh, this one panel in the center though, however, has a hole in the back there with a little VU meter screen. So it has a decal which I'm going to be placing over so that that can be seen. The other ones were just white panels. So I want to light it. So what I'm going to do is I have this two millimeter fiber optic piece which when I put it back behind here you can see just about completely fills that area. I tried all different things to glue it into the panel. Super glue, Elmer's glue, even epoxy. Nothing is working. So what I've decided to do is I got this little piece of shrink tube that the two millimeter fiber fits really nice and snug into as you can see right there. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of that shrink tube and glued that into the back side of the panel so I can just feed my fiber into it and that will hold it in place and then I can bend it down. So with all the fibers in place I'm now gluing my back panels onto all three and I've had it sitting here for a little while with some super glue in there clamped and you can see that the back panel is glued on there and the whole thing is done and finished with all the fibers running out through the bottom. And I've made some additional cutout here for each one for all the fibers to run through. But before I can uh, run my fibers through I've got this little geared motor here which as you can see spins at about 30 revolutions per minute and I have this photo etch piece which I painted the one side of it black and what this is used for is I'm gonna attach it to the end of this motor and this will go behind this photo etch piece and rotate so that you'll see it spinning behind that screen. And I've notched out my little light panel here so that the motor can just sit right here with the photo etch piece attached. And I've gone and I've epoxied the photo etch to the end of the motor. I've also made a box around three sides of my motor with some styrene so that the gears don't get messed up because now I can take this motor and I can glue it to my strip here and hold it in place with some hot glue and or super glue. And you can see here when I turn the power on how this uh, photo etch piece rotates on the end there. So I've super glued it into position just to hold it and now I'm going to go through with some hot glue and really secure this motor into place. And I'm going to do that all around the edges because uh, there is some torque there and I just want to make sure it doesn't pull itself free with the torque. 
and I've got that all glued into position now. And I'm using a 10k pot to reduce the speed down as low as it'll go before it just won't run anymore. And I've attached some wires to it again with a little connector on the end for easy plug-in. And here's how it looks with the uh, spinning photo etch behind the screen while lit. So now that that's out of the way, I can move on to feeding the fibers through from my upper panels and I can start to mount all three of my upper panels into position in the top of this main console unit here. And I've got my first one and you can see the fibers fit nicely in that cutout I did behind there and I just lightly push this piece snug into position. So I've got all three of them in position with the fibers run through. They are all glued into position as well, so they're nice and secure. So I'll be using an Adafruit trinket to control a blink rate of some LEDs for those upper panel units. And I've got all my wiring done up here with LEDs and the trinket. And here is the full main console lit and running. Uh, those upper panels, the lights blinking, are three different LEDs feeding the fibers. Random blinking to look like it's doing some stuff. You got the motor spinning there in the center and the radars and all the other lights. So that concludes this whole portion of the build and I hope you enjoyed this one. It was a pretty intense one. So until next time, thanks for joining me and thanks for watching. Hey, if you like watching my videos, please feel free to give them a like. And so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, click subscribe.